there is going to be a change. I don't know what that is. I don't know. I mean, we've all heard the the rumors, right? That they're going to have that cut benefits um, by 20 to 35%. They're going to continue to increase that full retirement age um, up into the 70s. You know, I don't know what's going to happen, but, um, you know, at the current rate, you know, it's just, it, it's uh, it's broken and, you know, I, I don't know how long it's going to last. You're listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, where you get valuable information you just can't find anywhere else. To thrive in today's trying times, you need the Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and get your free newsletter and gift. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever. And welcome. You are listening to and watching the Financial Survival Network. I'm your host, Terry Lutz. Well, we got some major issues to discuss here. Obviously, the economy is slowing. Everyone can see that. Mm -hmm. um, layoffs are up. But uh, has the Fed stood up and take notice? Well, arguably, you could say that their call for lower interest rates, although we haven't seen them yet, is the first salvo in their mission of pumping up the economy and keeping the stock market going, especially in an election year. Ed Seidel is with us now. So Ed, GDP, 1%. All right, so it doesn't qualify or classify as a recession yet. But if we had an honest inflation measure, maybe it would. Yeah, and and you know, I you know, I was just talking to to a client, and you know, we we're we we're talking about the old saying when it comes to uh, uh, statistics, right? Numbers, it's they're they're you know, there's there's lies, there's damn lies, and there's statistics, right? And and so depending on what numbers you want to use, um, it it really it, you know you can, um, you can hedge it one way or the other. But you know, honestly, the way that I'm looking at this is the Feds are saying, oh, hey, PCE that core. Um, it's at two percent. That's kind of our Atari number. You know, I think that they may be looking at that along with you know that you know one percent GDP. Where now all of a sudden, um, yeah, they they have the ability. That's the pass that they need to to start lowering rates um, because we see it. I mean, you and I and and everyone that we know. I mean, we're 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 seeing we're feeling the slowdown already. But uh, um, I don't know. Well, I I, I think uh, we'll. I do not think we'll be shocked next week during the Fed's meeting. All right. So they said they're going to cut rates, but they haven't done it yet. Yeah. They said three of them uh, for the coming year. Experts are saying six. In the meantime, rates have come down on their own, which is indicative of a possible recession. Mortgage rates, you know, long-term rates. The two-year has come down, which gives them breathing room because the Fed funds rate is still at five and a quarter. So they don't really have to do anything, perhaps, till later in the year. Those lower rates are no doubt going to be helping the uh, imperiled banking sector too, as well, right? Yeah, and, and and you're absolutely right. You know, I th I think the Feds have been looking at it, especially Jerome Powell. Um, a they're going to let the capital markets, um, you know, do his job. You know, and and that's actually what the the market should be doing is you know, um, doing what needs to be done, which is lowering rates. And if you look at what happened in October, you know, that 30-year mortgage, it was, you know, 8.6% uh, at the high. And 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 now, depending on the lender, you know, it's hovering around six. And I, I just saw one this morning, a little bit below six. So they're coming down on their own. Um, I don't think personally that the feds are even going to think about lowering rates until the mid to the end of the second quarter, um, which is May. I also disagree with the experts that they're going to lower it as much as six times. I, I I don't know how they can do that without kicking inflation back in because there's a lot of inflationary things going on right now. All these government jobs are inflationary. We're overspending, which is inflationary. Um, and so if they lower them too much, it's um, it's going to put us right back to, to where we were. Yeah, so there's a kind of no way out for them. The only thing they get to do is get off now, which they're probably better off doing nothing than something. But what happens when the market wakes up one day and says, you lied, we wanted lower rates and you didn't give them to us. And and then we have an inverted yield curve and all of that good stuff. 
Yeah, you, you know, um, I, it, that could definitely happen. Um, I think as long as the the Feds adhere to what they were talking about before, lowering rates two or three times, because they they changed it from four to to three times in August of last year. Um, I you know I think the markets are going to be fine. It's just not going to be a you know a trajectory straight up like it was last year. Uh, but it's an election year historically. It's always a positive year. You know the average is close to eight and a half percent. Um, no matter who's in the White House and whatever the running is. Um, but I, I think we have a narrow window between now and the election to, you know, make a little bit of hay while the sun shines. Um, you know, I, as long as everything is status quo, which means there's there's no additional geopolitical issue. We we, we don't have a, a, an event like Gaza, um, you know, or anything major happening or, you know, I, I, everyone's an overuse of the term black swan. Yeah. All right. So, what about uh, asking this question here? Uh, mm-hmm. So, inflation kicks up, precious metals start moving up, but then we have this thing called the January effect, right? And it's almost never wrong. It's one of the most solid indicators. So goes January. So goes the year. Yep. So then we'll have a dip probably after January or the first, second week of February. It'll dip through till uh, perhaps uh, summer. And then the Fed will start making some noises because uh, as the late great Alan Abelson said, uh, the Fed is doing what it does best, which is uh, elect a president, right? Absolutely. Every time. Every time. You know, I, you know, and if you go back and you look at the stats during um, yeah, a presidential election year, um, you know, the the turnover from, you know, a, a Democratic administration to a Republican or Democrat staying, you know, uh, Democrat to Democrat, uh, Republican to Republican. Um, there is really not a whole lot of variance um, in that it, through the end of the year, it's the following year where there's a little bit of change. Um, but, you know, I look, I. Every time, you know, I, I come on your podcast, I say the same thing. You know, it's there's there's a debt issue. There's a debt bubble. Um, but I'm positive this year, um, especially AI tech. Um, I don't think that run is done. Um, and, you know, industrials and materials, because that's been beat up so hard, even though the economy is slowing down, you know, I, I think that that's, you know, a really good sector going forward um, especially, you know, as there there's hedges against the inflation. I, I think, you know, the industrials and materials that they're going to benefit from it. Okay. So, so, <laughs> and then, uh, of course, uh, we, we would be remiss. We didn't talk about inflation. So inflation's already cooked into the system. Everything you buy has gotten more expensive, especially things you need like food and food. Energy, well, that's down a little bit, but we'll see how long that led us for. Uh, hey, inflation, is it behind us? Is the worst behind? Or are we going to have another resurgence because it's a 20-year cycle? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, we're it's uh, uh, we're, we're, we're just uh, just barely ahead of the curve right now. And it is. It's going to come surging back. I mean, you can't, even though the feds have that core target of 2%, I mean, which is literally arbitrary. I mean, it, it really is. Um, but when you add as many government jobs as we did and we continue to overspend, I mean, a Republican, Democrat, it doesn't matter. We're all overspending, right? Um, and then we add in all the unfunded liabilities that we have from Social Security to Medicare, um, defense spending, and, and just, you know, uh, covering the the interest on the national debt. Um, you know, that's all inflationary. And we combine the, the the national debt, 34 plus trillion, and the unfunded liabilities, which are estimated to be somewhere between 180 and 190 trillion on top of it. I mean, there's yeah, that's inflationary. I mean, there's at, at some point in time, whether it's this year or next year, I mean, it, it's it's gonna come home to roost. Um, and, and that's what makes me nervous. This is why I say all the time, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic and, you know, we, we've got a very narrow window between now and in the end of the year through the election. Yeah. Do you think they're going to take my social security away from me here? (laughs) You know what? I don't know if it's going to be there. 
Um, I, when when you look at the aging population, uh, the amount of um, the workforce that is not actually engaged in working, um, you know, there, there's not enough people funding the the boomers that that are retiring. So, um, I, there's there's going to be a change. I don't know what that is. I don't know. I mean, we've all heard the the rumors, right? That they're going to have that cut benefits. Um, by 20 to 35 percent. They're going to continue to increase that full retirement age um, up into the 70s. You know, I don't know what's going to happen, but, um, you know, at the current rate, you know, it's just it's uh, it's broken. And, you know, I, I don't know how long it's going to last. All right. So I, I should enjoy it while I got it, huh? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Here's a question for you, Lee. Ordinarily, you're better off taking it till you Waiting until you hit seventy to take, right? Because then you get your maximum benefit. But in your life, life, is, is this something that uh, we want to perhaps uh, speed up? Yeah, you know, when when we're building plans for people, you know, we're looking at it two ways. You know, uh, the the math. You know, um, we, when's what what does it tell us the best time to take it? Um, you know, is it, you know, 67, 68, 70? I mean, is it, is it early at age 62, right? Everyone's situation is a little bit different. Now, having said that, um, I, in my personal belief, I don't think that if they make cuts, uh, that they're going to cut the benefits. I hate saying the word benefit because it's our money, but cut those benefits of the recipients the that are receiving. What's that? I say they'll cut the outlays, right? Yeah, yeah, well, benefits. that's exactly it. Yeah. So- like to your, your point of back, right? But just give you yeah. money back. That's all it is, and so it may make sense to actually take that money a little bit early, um, so that that way, yes, you may have a reduction, but um, at least you're going to get it. And you're locked in, um, and it could wind up being more than than what the outcome is. Yeah, mine is I've got like survivor benefits, so that pays me about half of what my eventual uh, payment will be after seventy. So. Do I get greedy now and take it all now, which would give me probably, I don't know, fifteen hundred a month more, or or maybe a thousand a month more if I took it all now, or do I wait till you know three years from now when I'm seventy and then get it? You know, it's a, it's a question I've been having difficulties with. Well, you, you know what? And that's a great question. And the fact that you're even thinking about it is really important because most people don't think about it that way. Um, and, and it really, you know, is it going to be there? Yeah. We, I, we've we heard estimates from 2039 to 2035 to, you know, 2026. I mean, who really knows? Because it's, it's really, there's nothing there. It's, you know, it's a flow through. It, um, it, you know, the the uh, social security that's taken out of our taxes every pay period, that's what's going to to fund the retirees. So if we don't have enough people working to fund that, you know, that therein lies the problem. And and where is that that break even point or the breaking point, if you will, for that to happen? So breaking point I'm more concerned about than the break even point. Yeah. Well yeah, point. absolutely. So, you know, because it's a question also of if they don't do anything about it, then inflation's going to eat it away anyway, right? Well, yeah, you're exactly right. Um, you, you know, this fallacy, we and I've been hearing it all day on the news, um, the experts saying, well, you know, inflation, you know, inflation is going down, inflation is going down. It's not going down. It's the rate of growth of inflation that's decreasing. I mean, prices are still going up. Um, and so, you know, it's that, like you said, you know, even though they're adding that, that cost of living adjustment and everything else, I mean, you know, inflation, it, it's, it's, uh, it's that silent tax, the silent killer, if you will, against your wealth. It just keeps eroding it little by little, month by month. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's sometimes not so little, right? <laughs> yeah. Sometimes not so little because it does. I mean, you know, you've got di- different inflationary factors, just the standard of living. Um, like you said, you know, those luxuries like food, shelter, clothing, okay? And and then you add into it um, healthcare um, or, you know, if your kids are in college, you know, the, the inflation rates, the growth rate and cost on, on healthcare and prescriptions and um, and education is astronomical. Um, you know, the, the economic inflation rate pales comparison to you know, those industries. So it does, it's, it is, it's a wealth killer. 
you know, you know it's amazing. I'm looking at my social security statement. I put mm-hmm. in between me and my employer, and basically that was my employer. I put in right two hundred and sixty thousand dollars. And you know, it's gonna take a long time for me just to break even on the deal. And my parents, on the other hand, you know, people 10, 15 years older than me, and they they really uh, cleaned up on this thing. I'll be happy just to break even. You, you know, you're exactly right. I mean, when it was originally designed, um, you know, life expectancy was, I mean, so 65 was the original, you know, um, full retirement age, and life expectancy was below 70, you know, 67, 68, 69. And now people are living well into their their mid to late nineties, and I and I think um, it would not surprise me, wouldn't shock me at all if you start seeing them, you know, continue to increase the eligibility age and the full retirement age, um, you know, to to get close to that that same point again, because now I think life expectancy, carry for you and me, I just saw it again, and it's below eighty again. I think it's like seventy nine or something like that for. Oh, uh, no. Exactly. That's the so we have to be. You know this. I'm just gonna just clarify what you're saying. Yep. Is if you make it to 60, then you're probably gonna make it to 83. If you make it to 65, yeah. then you're probably gonna make it to your mid to high 80s. And if you make it to 67, you'll probably make it to like 88 or 89. Those numbers aren't exact, but that comes from the actuarial tables. But the actual life expectancy of American male is under, it's like 77, I think, right? Oh, is it that low? Okay. I, I just knew the average overall was was below um, um, uh, 80. I didn't realize it was 77. I didn't realize it was that low. And no. and we're seeing that, right? With, you know, healthcare, the, the modern medicine and everything else, you know, our clients, our aging population, they are living longer and longer. And so, you know, we're having to plan out. Uh, the these plans until they're mid and upper nineties, um, just based on the the stats that you just talked about. So I just looked it up. American life expectancy, that without regard to mm-hmm. sex, gender, is seventy nine point eleven years, which is actually increased um, from uh, two thousand twenty one when it was just under seventy nine. But uh, you know, at one point uh, it was definitely higher. Uh, but, um, you know, point is, uh, you have to be, uh, very concerned. Men, the median life expectancy is 81.4 and the women, female was 84.8, which was down from, well, 2023 went up a little bit. You have to look at, you can go it better than me. And the uh, point is there's different numbers. Yeah. But point is, uh, You could last a long time, and if you're holding out, hoping your Social Security is going to get you through it, just figure if it makes your house and car payment and uh, buys your groceries and uh, your utilities, you'll be doing really well. Yeah. You know, and I mean, just food, shelter, clothing, basic necessities. Um, And, you know, at, at the continued growth rate of inflation... You know, that's that's going to be tough, especially when you add in, you know, increasing taxes. I mean, we're seeing that here in Ohio, you know, all the, the additional, um, you know, assessments on on uh, uh, property values and, you know, school district taxes and everything else. And in um, even if your home is free and clear, it's becoming very difficult to afford to live in the house that you raise your families in, you know, for a lot of retirees that are on a fixed income. Yeah, which is why I'm creating a new newsletter. And if you're subscribed to my existing one, you'll automatically get it. It's called the Inflate. It's called Inflation Cafe, where dollars go to die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. The title. Patchy name, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but point is, uh, this is serious stuff here. And I didn't, uh, don't know how serious it is till. You wind up retiring and then you don't have enough. And then you're a greeter at Walmart, except the greeter job is probably going to be replaced by a robot soon, right? Boy, you know what? I didn't even think about it like that. You're exactly right. Yeah. You, you know, I mean, because it, it, 
the the front end capital for that robot is going to be way more expensive. But long term, you know, um, it's going to be cheaper. You know, they're never going to get sick. They don't need vacation, no benefits. They just need a service contract, right? <laughs> that's that's it. That's it. Yep. Yeah. Well, interesting times ahead for sure, Ed. Hey, just tell us where we find you. How do we connect with you on the web? Yeah, um, you you can find us at egsifinancial.com. That is the best way to find us and get a hold of us anytime you need us. All right. And the link to that is in the show notes, this interview on financialsurvivalnetwork.com. Make sure you go there, sign up for your free newsletter. Ed, always a pleasure. And we will be talking to you again real soon. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thanks for having me back. Thanks for listening to Carrie Lutz's Financial Survival Network, your solution to today's trying times. For the latest, go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. Financial Survival Network, now more than ever.